the, the experience of being with you all in the archives was just amazing. Let me just say that. But let me ask you, what, you know, what was your experience of being together in the archive like for, for during the NEH seminar? And how do you think it influenced your approach to your chapter? And what I'd like you to do too, as you think about this and answer it is, um, what, tell us a little bit about the focus of your chapter as well as you're kind of thinking through how the archive being in the archive for such an extended period of time really influenced your work. Maybe I'll start because I was thinking about this experience as opposed to my experience researching in other archives. And it's always a very solitary experience. I think you sit there with your little piece of paper and even if you're aware of people working on the same author, there's always this hesitation to even talk to the other person. You know, this idea, everyone has their own um, little project. So one of the things that I thought was really meaningful was that we knew each other. So we were able to ask each other questions and. I'm sure many times I just um, bothered people by saying, oh, what's that? They had something that looked kind of interesting on their desk. And also even asked people to try to help me decipher some of Elizabeth Bishop's writing, which was quite challenging. I f ended up focusing a lot on postcards in the archives. And it was actually Douglas Bassford, another contributor who had postcards out uh, on his desk and made me think about them more. And we ended up talking just by the fact of us having similar material out and being able to see what he was doing and talking about it afterwards. So I think that was really different from my previous archival experiences. I'm gonna second um, what Yao was saying that my experiences in the archives has sort of been, um, you know, I sort of feel like Admiral Byrd or something. It's it's very solitary. Um, whereas having over a dozen scholars to consult with made it feel more like an archaeological dig in which, you know, you can sort of look over another person's shoulder um, without being too nosy and, and ask what they're doing. It led to a lot of kind of cross-pollinization, I think, of our projects and as much as we were in active conversation. So Richard's work, for example, on um, the different forms of and models of psychoanalysis that Bishop was familiar with or steered away from um, was very helpful in my reading of the Foster letters vis-a-vis -vis, um, in the waiting room and, and those drafts. So it was, it was really, I think, kind of an ideal experience of an archive and as much as um, all of these projects and all of my work there really felt like it was uh, informed by more than a dozen scholars work instead of just my own pair of eyes. Hearing uh, you, you talk about that, Heather and Yael hear, talk about your experiences makes me feel really lucky because my visit to the Bishop Archives was my first time ever in a, in a literary archive. Uh, I come from a creative writing background, and so I know how to write poems, but I, I definitely had no familiarity with how to dig around in an author's letters and drafts and what you're supposed to do. So getting to spend time around other Bishop scholars and um, archivists and other writers and just kind of watch what they were doing in the archive and, um, and ask lots of questions was, was so incredibly beneficial. And also to just be validated in the, the process of mucking around and having no idea what I was doing and then finding something that interested me. I looked at uh, Bishop's love letters with um, her late in life partner, Alice Smith Bessel. And I was reading them because I thought they were steamy and interesting and funny and I miss my wife and I, and I, I love writing about love in my poems. And so I was just very personally fascinated. And then in talking with the other uh, researchers and especially working with Bethany, to just have that validated as like, this isn't, you know, nobody's talked about this yet, really. This could be an interesting research project. You should dig more in there. Um, so I learned so much and I'm really um, grateful to have the chance to to be with everyone, just to, just to echo what Heather and Yael have shared. I like what you describe as mucking around because I don't know, you know, I've been in and out of archives and working in archives for years and I still feel like I'm mucking around. And so, 
I don't, you know, John, you're the, the archivist here. Um, does it, I mean, I, it, it does, it, I don't know whether it gets easier. It just gets stranger or different or, you know, mm. well, <laughs> still actually, mucking around. <laughs> yeah, well, it's different. I mean, part of the reason why I'm not an archivist full time is because the mucking around is full of things that I'm allergic to. So I'm actually on the other side of the, the process that, I mean, that's pretty lonely, the, the sort of organizing setting. And that was the interesting thing about this, this seminar. And in part, like the, the sort of, it enabled these kinds of accidental things to happen both socially in the archive and sort of adjacent to both of those things. Like one of, like I, I learned about what was it? Little, little squirrel nutkin, Richard? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I a lot. But I went originally to look at, in part, to, to look at the influence of Plath on Bishop, which seemed to me an under, sort of underreported, possibly interesting thing to look at. And I, I, I did get to look at her annotations on, um, their, they do have a number of, of Bishop's books at Vassar, so got to look at Ariel and the, the kind of scratch marks she made next to things. Mm -hmm. That didn't turn out to be that helpful. But it did, on the other hand, lead me to this, the, the um, very toll taker, which is the, the poem, the draft of a poem, or not even draft, but sort of early poem that was in Alice Quinn's uh, Edgar Allan Poe in the jukebox. And which, which really, like to see it in real life was like totally different than I saw it in, in the book by Quinn. Um, even though to be fair, like Quinn's sort of publication of the, the, the poem in its sort of, sort of whatever in a slightly bolderized version was my entry into it, made me curious about it. And then looking at it in the, in the archive was, was kind of an amazing experience of like having, being introduced by this editor and then seeing the actual thing was just wonderful. So, um, but I, all that said, I think the accidental and the contingents were, are, are such a big part of the archival experience. And also, I mean, I didn't even, I didn't in intend on writing about a draft poem. I didn't think about writing about something that had been edited by someone else and presented. And I, I never had, that wasn't even in my mind at all. But I also had, I had Richard and Jeff to listen to my first draft of the essay. And then I had the, the whole seminar listen to the second draft of the essay. And so like it's, the whole thing was really built, sort of it just built one thing on the other, accrued or sort of like um, sentimented or sedimented. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's my, my experience is that it's sort of a holistic or a kind of whole archive experience. And um, the book feels to me like that now. And also the idea of this sort of entry into the sort of digital or into the open access is really where archives are going. So it's like, it seems to me that that's, that's a super exciting sort of end, but not even end point, but like non-closure for our, for our thing, um, for our meeting. I'd kind of like to echo what what everybody else said about the uh, the great sense of camaraderie and and not not being totally aloneness. That um, I'd been to the Bishop Archive a couple times before, and I'd did uh, done archival work on on Randall Jarrell as well. And um, all previously, I always felt like there is no I don't do not have enough time. You know, I'm not going to be able to see everything I need to see. And I didn't have enough time here either, but it was it was a much more pleasant uh, experience than sort of solitary wor working uh, in, in the archive. I do distinctly remember the day that we the, 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 the rules shifted or something in the archive and we were no longer looking at photocopies. We were looking at the originals. And I had looked at all these letters uh, by Alice, Bishop's partner, and they, and they looked, you know, and, and then when I saw them in, in their original form, you could see that Alice writes with all these different colored pens, purple and red and blue, and she added such color to Bishop's life. And so that, that really matters. But I also, so it just like taught me so much, just like the process of moving from the photocopies to the original taught me so much about the materiality of the archive. But then I also remember the day that, uh, the, the day that we got to look at Bishop's, uh, baby book it was like a party was happening like everybody was like crying and laughing and screaming and it was there was such like joy and like ecstatic energy around just being able to like hold this this artifact and it was a really magical moment for me to to see that and get to be a part of it yeah and and you know just i mean uh, that's a great example the baby book because if you don't see if you just see photocopies of that um there's lots of pages missing as well of the from the photocopies and and there's no way that you can get the sense of of you know 
her life as a baby and, and, and all those, uh, you know, it's one of those uh, Victorian deluxe baby books. And so all the Victorian pictures in that book, which sort of complement the, the sort of um, noting of Bishop's life are, are not even in the photocopies. They just, the, the, those pictures haven't, haven't even been, you know, included. So it's, it, it is amazing. It's just not the same thing at all. The, the, the important, you know, we talk about photocopies a lot, you know, uh, Vassar uses them as surrogates and, and it would be, it would be so great if that archive is digitized. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, that it, it is the perfect archive to digitize because it is so full of images and so rich. Those notebooks alone would be amazing in a digital form. Mm 